the music. God's family, that's the type of worship that the Lord desires. We're going to continue to keep because the presence of, of God is heavy. Um, that is the worship he desires. You want angels to enter wherever you are, worship God. Worship God in praise. Worship God with your heart because they will come. They will come. Um, we, we have no uh, announcements this week. Um, I'm going to leave them for next week, but I know that, um, Makiba, you had a quick testimony of, uh, we prayed for a job for you. I don't know if you wanted to take just two or three minutes and, and give your quick testimony of, of what happened. Um, if you can, if you're still trying to recover from worship, um, we can wait till next week. Uh, yeah, I would rather um, wait for next week, but I can say quickly um, that I, we prayed for my job, um, a job in education tomorrow, my first day, um, third grade teacher. And um, it's, yeah, so, you know, thank so you. Got, we prayed for a job and, and she loves educating and teaching and she got it. And um, it was what, less than three weeks, Makiba? Yes, uh, definitely less than three weeks. Um, yes, it was about a week and a half, almost like two weeks. And I was just telling her she's been waiting to share this testimony. It was after we prayed literally less than three weeks later. She had a job. She has her own classroom and all that good stuff. But I'll let her share. I just wanted to um, reiterate how important it is when we pray for things and God comes through to testify. He gets all the glory. Um, it, you know, just a lot of people ask for prayer or they come and they pray and they help us pray, but then we don't have the follow through. We don't um, have the testimony or look for the testimony. Um, you know, God is a, a God who answers prayer. And um, I just wanted people to be aware of that and to celebrate. Uh, with those of you that God has um, done things right here on um, this Wednesday night for. All right, I'm going to recap for um, talking about the angels. We started last week with the truth about angels, um, part one, and I'm just naming them part one because there's a lot of information to cover. There were some scriptures that, you know, I began to teach and sometimes I get so overwhelmed and, and so excited about teaching that I'll forget to mention scriptures and things. And, you know, we're really big on that so that if you start talking about it to someone, or if you hear something in your spirit that sounds a little funny and you're kind of like, mm, I don't know about that, you know, you need the word, you need to back it up with the word. So I'm going to run over some of the things that we mentioned last week, just real briefly, and then we'll continue on. If we have to extend one more week because God came through and wanted some, some more worship today, then that's what we'll do. Okay. But I won't rush through this and pack you all with so much information that you can't keep it all together. I did not let Nevea post last week because I wanted to make sure that I knew that I had the scriptures for the stuff that I was missing, but she will post last week, part one and this week and um, on the website. So you can go on there um, tomorrow and, and go and re-listen if you need to. All right. Hebrews uh, chapter one talks about verse seven, talks about the fact that and verse 14, uh, angels are ministering spirits. We talked about the fact that they are spirits um, that they can take human form, but, you know, because the Bible talks about, um, entertaining angels unaware. And we wanted to talk about the fact that some people like to call their family angels. Oh, that's my angel, a family member that died or something. That's not possible. Okay. Cause angels existed before in the beginning. And I'll go over that um, scripture, but you know, we, they, they existed when the world was created. And so a human being can't go be an angel. Okay. Angels are spirits. Like I said, they can take human form to come help us, but they don't just, uh, aren't previously humans and then become human. Okay. So sometimes people are just using that symbolically, but sometimes there are people that are seriously believed that people can be angels. No. Okay. 
uh, Hebrews 14 tells us that angels are servants of God. So you don't worship them. Um, there's also a scripture in Revelations. We'll go over that. But you don't worship angels. They are servants just like you and I. Okay. And they're sent to take care of us. It says in, in Hebrews 1 and 14 that their spirits sent to care for the people who what? Inherit salvation. Inherit salvation. Because we also understand that the devil has angels right? Angels are created beings by God, their spirits, revelation, excuse me, revelation 12 and nine. It says, then the great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil. And this was one of the scriptures. I don't believe that I gave you or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world was thrown down to the earth with all his angels. So that lets us know that, you know, the, we had talked about the Bible said a third of the angels were taken down, right? There's a multitude. There is no number that I know of in the Bible that shows you how many angels there are. There are multitudes, meaning there's a lot. But what we do know is that God has double the angels than the enemy has, right? Because if he took one third and three thirds as a whole, then we have two thirds left, okay? And so I said that because sometimes people are deceived by angels of the devil or demons or agents of Satan. Okay. So revelation 12 and nine tells you he went down to the earth with his angels. All right. Um, we co-labor with angels. Now the, the Bible shows many places, many, many places where the angels work with us. I'm just going to focus on one that I, uh, found and we're going to, it's Genesis 19, one through 29. I'm not going to, I'm going to come back to this, but it just shows that the angels are interacting with humans. I really want to look at this, excuse me, Genesis 19, if I didn't say that correctly, one through 29, I'm going to go through and point out a couple of things, but this is a scripture that highlights how angels and humans are actually conversing and doing things together. And something that I brought about last week for us to understand is we're supposed to work with them. If you have not heard from an angel or you haven't been able to see one because the prophet Elisha saw angels when uh, God was showing him that with uh, his servant, that heaven's armies were surrounding them, were with them to fight their enemy. If you haven't, that means you have not reached a level in operation as a believer with power. And so it just means there is another facet that you need to get to because we work with them. I was at a place where I could not see angels, but only in visions and stuff. And um, the scripture, hold on one second, that tells you that you could see angels in visions. Acts chapter 10, verse three. Angels are in visions. They also give them, um, but we, we won't get into that right this moment. Um, I used to only see them in dreams or visions. I can see them now walking around in my house and I hear from them as well um, as hearing the voice of the Lord. I did not always have that ability, but it comes when you strengthen your relationship with God and you build an atmosphere of worship like the one that we had today. When you can build an atmosphere of worship and you can uh, get into a place where you have relationship with God, you will begin to see the things of heaven right here on earth. And that is angels included. Okay, just a little quick recap for uh, Truth of Angels Part 1. The angel of the Lord mentioned in the book of Zechariah, you can find it chapter three, chapter six. The Bible talks about the angel of the Lord that is separate from angels or different types that we're going to go through. Um, we talked about, so the angel of the Lord is the Lord. If you want to research that further, listen to part one and then go into the book of Zechariah. And he actually identifies himself when he's speaking to Zechariah. Um, I put it this way. If God is the creator and he created angels, surely God can take the deity uh, into an angel. He can, he can perform the things that angels could do. Why? Because Father God is a spirit. Jesus is God in the flesh, in the body, right? And then the Holy Ghost is God's spirit within us. 
So God can do anything that he has created beings for. Okay. And you'll look at the different ones he's done. Uh, the angel of the Lord visited Abraham, you know, Zachariah, Daniel, all the prophets, all, all the, the major folks, you will see interaction with the angel of the Lord. I spoke about archangels. Okay. Uh, the book of Daniel mentions um, Gabriel and Michael. Um, archangels, um, there's more of them. However, there's a little bit of controversy because some of them are mentioned in places, and I don't believe I said this last week. They are mentioned in places that are not recognized as the canic, the 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 66 books of the Bible. Okay. Um, it's the Apocrypha and the book of Enoch. And I'm talking about uh, the uh, Archangel Raphael, who's known for healing. And then the angel Uriel, who has been known um, for prophecy and uh, as a protector, some other things. Michael is the angel, Archangel of Warfare. Gabriel is the messenger. And you can go back to, to one for that. Um, we talked about the fact that angels have food. Um, the, the word discussed that when they were in the wilderness in the book of Exodus, that they were receiving food of angels, which was manna from heaven. Angels take charge over us and protect us. According to Psalms 91, they make mistakes. According to Job's four and 18, uh, they follow Lucifer. So when they once all worshiped God, you had a third that fell so they can make mistakes. Angels talk with humans. Zechariah chapter five, verse 10. We also saw that in the book of Daniel and uh, in Genesis, you know, so again, they can speak with us. We can talk back to them. They can hear us. As a matter of fact, angels record and report what we do. I'll come back to that. Um, so when you promise something to God, let me, let me tell you, because they, they held me up on that about a few days ago. When you promise something to God, and even if you think you're in church and nobody hears you or you're home and you're like, God, if you, if you do this, I promise, I promise I'm not going to do that. They are recording that. They're recording that. Angels can play, and I'll show you in the word. Angels can play instruments, Revelations 8 and 6. Uh, prayers, our prayers are given into the angel's hands, revelations eight and four before God. So that's why I'm telling you when you pray, it is important for those of you that don't pray, that don't think taking two seconds to, to pray to God, or even praying in your heart is working. Uh, revelations eight and four proves you wrong because they take your prayers and they carry them to God. Okay. Um, and it's also, you know, our prayers are, uh, in the book of revelation, uh, talked about as incense, you know, as, as, as sweet smelling incense to God. So prayers are very, very important. If Jesus said that, that my temple is a temple of prayer, not a, but you're making it a house of robbers and a den of thieves. I think prayer is pretty important. All right. Um, angels bring food. They brought food to Elijah, first Kings chapter 19, verse five. It said, the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. They come to help us. They help Jesus in the book of Luke chapter four after his testing in the wilderness, right? Before he began ministry. The Bible said that after the enemy tempted him three times that the angels came and ministered to him. OK, so when you go through testing and trials, when you're dealing with big warfare. The angels will come and help and minister to you. But notice that during the testing, the angels did not do anything. So understand when you're in testing. The angels, you know, you might be praying and everything they're working, but they may not show up and begin to interact with you until it's over because that's the point of testing. Okay. So don't get frustrated with God. Don't blame God. You got to learn the higher things of the spirit because it would be the equivalent of the teacher testing you, but you're asking the teacher to come help you with the test. No, she'll talk to you after, or he'll talk to you after the test and say, hey, this is what you got right. This is kind of where you went wrong with this answer and, or, hey, you mastered this. 
angels show up in real life. Acts chapter 12, verse nine, we went in depth about Peter and in the prison and those things in part one. There is tongues of angels. Psalm 78 and 25, it was also in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We talk about the gifts of the spirits because people forget that there's tongues of angels. Listen, for those of you that don't know, that means I just told you the devil has angels. The devil can speak in tongues. It's a demonic tongue though. So the demons and the enemy do have a tongue, meaning they can speak and manifest tongues. It's just demonic. Some people don't uh, realize that. And um, uh, I, I want to share a testimony uh, with you all, but because of a uh, short shortness of time, I'll save it to next week. But, um, you know, if I forget, remind me to tell you my testimony about demonic tongues and the first time that I witnessed that face to face inside of a human being. Uh, it was it was horrible. Um, OK, angels preach the gospel. Galatians one and eight angels can take human form. Hebrews 13 and two. OK. Um, and then, um, that was the, they, you know, don't neglect showing hospitality to strangers. Okay. Now, uh, let's go to types of angels. We talked about the archangels, right? They're chief princes, but let's go to, uh, we heard Aramiah and worship talk about seraphim. Okay. So there are some people like, uh, Judaism, Jews that uh, they have a, a, a five order rank of, of angels. Um, Christians know uh, a nine levels of a hierarchy. It's kind of like if you have to put the angels in order of, you know, where they work and how they are from God's throne room down to us. This is the order that we're talking about. So they split them into three spheres. The first sphere is the one, the angels that are closest to God. So the seraphim are the highest rank. Seraphim are known as the burning fire, the flames of fire, the blue ones. Okay. And they are at the throne room of God. These are the angels, according to Isaiah chapter six, that cry, holy, 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 that worship God all the time. In heaven, there's no time in the spiritual realm. Let me clear that up. Spiritual realm, there's no time. God created time for us, but there's no time in the spiritual realm. And the scripture that covers that, I don't have the address uh, really quick, but it's the one that says that an hour, right, is, is like, here, let me just look it up because I don't like. An hour is like a day. Okay. Psalms 90 and four for you, a thousand years are as a passing day, as brief as a few night hours, you know, days, nights, and hours in the spiritual realm. There's also another one and I'll find it, but it, it tells you that hours, days, and nights and things are not the same to God as they are to us. Okay. And so you have to understand in spirit realm, there's no time. So they worship forever. Okay. They are six wing, like Aramiah's talk. They have eyes in there. Um, it's, it's sometimes it's very hard for people to, uh, picture these type of angels because we've been shown, um, you know, uh, men looking with big wings and sometimes for the cherubim who I'm going to talk about next, You've been shown the, the little fat bubby babies on Valentine's with the little wings and stuff. And no, that's not all the way correct. Uh, this stuff was created by, you know, human beings. But cherubim would be the second order in the first sphere. OK, the book of Ezekiel talks about uh, the cherubim. The cherubim are um, 
what was guarding the glory of God, the Ark of the Covenant, the Holy of Holies in the temple, the cherubim filled. And even when they were creating it, Solomon's temple and everything, they were the ones, the angels that you see covering the Ark or the glory of God. Uh, they are also uh, depicted as having like two wings and four faces. These are the ones they're talking about, the face of a lion, the ox, the animals, the human, the eagle. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 10, verse 12 uh, discusses both the cherubim and wheels. Wheels are other types of angels um, and, and known as the living beings. But we'll talk about that next. They're also called throne angels. OK, the book of Ezekiel is full of spiritual um beings and things. If you want to really know what's going on in the throne room of God and in, in the, the, the heaven, the third heaven, okay, because uh, we learned a uh, while ago, but for those of you that may not be familiar, there's three heavens. And who talked about that? Paul did. So Paul verified there's more than one heaven. Okay. The, the third heaven is where the throne room of God is. The second heaven is what we know as space, where the planets are, where the stars are. There are demons that reside in the second heaven, okay? A lot of people are misconception about the fact that the devil and his angels and everything are either in hell under the earth or on the earth, but they're not in heaven. No, they're in a second heaven. There are people who have testified about that. There are things in the Bible, but that's for another time. Okay, um, the first heaven is here, sky, earth, okay? Um, all right. And the book of Genesis talks about the firmament, the sky and, and, um, you know, the, the separation of the heavens. Okay. Now cherubim, we talked about them being, uh, at, at the Holy of Holies, the devil, Satan was, um, talked about in the book of Ezekiel, um, as a cherubim, okay? Um, so he was guarding the glory of God, which is why, you know, we talk about him coming as an angel of light, right? Um, we all know that, that light fills heaven, that there's no electricity in as far as, you know, lights, you're not plugging nothing in. God's glory is the light of, of heaven. But uh, the enemy was a cherubim, who was set to help guard the glory of God. And so he was in this hierarchy. All right, you have thrones and thrones you can find, um, there are a class of angels right underneath the cherubim. Um, you got Colossians one and six, first Peter three, 21 and 22. Um, and then you, you, you have them, uh, in Daniel 7 and 9, where they talked about the wheels, fiery flames, burning fire, um, they are described as wheels that move next to the cherubim beneath the throne of God. Okay, so these are all um, I've known uh, for thrones to operate with some men of God that you see, not just men, but women of God that have a high level of grace. Meaning if you see those that are moving where the glory of God overcomes people and, and they're falling out and things like that, and you know, they didn't even have to touch them. Things, these are the angels helping out to do these types of miracles and deliverance and things like that. OK, it is all the power of God. Understand. But remember that we co-labor with the angels. So the angels are there to do the will of God. OK, to do what God has called them to do. Angels all have assignments. OK, angels all have assignments. Um, so as you as we talked about the first sphere, the seraphim are at the top. Right, they're always with God. And then you've seen that the other two are also in the presence of God. So all these three classes are in the presence of God in the third heaven, but they have particular instances. Um, if I don't, because of lack of time, you know, I can go back, but if you look at some of these scriptures 
it tells you when they came about. A good way, if you're interested, would be to start studying the scriptures according to what type of angel you're trying to understand more about. It's not a bad thing to understand who you're working with, right? If you were at work and you had your coworker and your partner, you need to understand what they're doing and they need to understand what you're doing. Um, and, and, and then you're working towards one mission. So it's not a bad thing to want to know more. Where people get into problems is worshiping an angel or they see a human do something with the help of an angel and, and the spirit of God and they begin to worship the person. And it's not the person, it is the spirit of God and the angels will move on the presence of God. Um, this is why the angel tells uh, the servant that he doesn't want, he tells them, do not worship me for I am a servant. You worship God because he ain't doing nothing without God and neither are we. Okay, second sphere. These are all covered in Ephesians chapter six, verse 12. Um, they may not be mentioned exactly like this. Uh, there are still a lot more. There's many, 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 many scriptures on angels, but there are a lot of um, scriptures that are very basic and some of them don't go in and you have to study a little further, okay? Um, if you don't know what Strong's Concordance is, I suggest that you um, look that up. And why? Because I've talked about this before. Um, there are words that translate. A lot of the things dealing with angels are Greek. The Bible was written in Greek and Hebrew. If you don't translate things, you will misunderstand. And, and a lot of people take on traditional things about angels and they don't read and really understand the word. Strong's Concordance will help give you, take the word, give you the original, whether it was Greek or Hebrew, and then give you other words to help you understand the true meaning of the word. Because it doesn't translate to English the way that we think all the time. Okay, second sphere, dominions or lordships, okay? Dominions or lordships. These are angels that regulate the duties of lower angels, okay? So they're kind of, you know, in charge of the lower angels. You know how we call the Lord our Lord and, and we work under him. We're still doing the work of the Lord. It's like that for these angels, they're in charge, but they are angelic lords and they will make themselves physically known to us. Uh, we uh, most likely, unless you're reaching a higher level of grace, um, you won't be privy to things like thrones. And, you know, we have the word for seraphims, but you, you would need to uh, have visited the throne room of God. And that takes a high level of discipline and of purity to do those kind of things. Okay. But uh, dom dominion, uh, excuse me, dominions and lordships may reveal themselves, um, but it's very extreme, very, very extreme. There has to be a reason, meaning you're packing power and you're affecting uh, the spiritual realm in such a way where they need to come speak to you or, or show themselves to you. I have had a angelic being uh, or a demon uh, from the kingdom of darkness that identified himself as a Lord, come speak to me uh, because we were doing some warfare prayers. And so he wasn't very happy about that. But in that instance, in that case, um, you may have, you know, uh, as, as a leader of a ministry or a group that's high level of warfare prayer and things like that, you may find that. All right, virtues are next. They're known for controls of the elements. You know how, you know, on the other side, they have these uh, gods of nature and, and all those things going on. These type of angels will help with uh, moving things because you have uh, natural disasters, you have earthquakes and, you know, things like that going on. They assist to help with the elements. Um, and they also help humans to um, strengthen their, their faith in God. They, um, 
they come and and they uh, help you to encourage you and and do things like that. You know, miracles that that we are trying to do as well. Deliverance is a miracle. I, I remember speaking that to someone and um, them going, "Huh? Yeah, deliverance. If somebody receives deliverance, angelic assistance is there, and that's a miracle." Um, Powers or authorities, okay? We're used to hearing that one. Ephesians 2.2, 2. I'm going to go to that real quick. And it looks like we are going to have to continue to next week because um, there's just a lot to cover. But Ephesians 2.2, 2, I wanted to read this. It says, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is a commander, but he's not the commander in chief. The commander in chief is God. But it tells you right here, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. So if there's powers on the devil's side that he's the commander of, then there's powers on God's side. So he must have turned those powers that were on God's side against him. Okay. So, you know, sometimes when you're searching in scriptures, you may find if Satan has it on his side, then surely it belonged to God first. Okay. So you may find proof like that. Um, the third sphere. All right. Which I was very surprised um, when I first started, you know, really studying angels, uh, principalities and rulers. But if you think about it, Principalities and rulers are over lands, nations, and groups of people. We're on the earth. So they're in that, that bottom closer to us. Okay. So for example, if you try to go to the Caribbean islands, I tried to go one year. Uh, my sister invited me and the Lord, I had gotten um, what I like to call closer to the Lord, but higher in spiritual authority here on the earth. And the Lord said to me, you will not go over there because you didn't clear it with me. And they're already planning to attack you if you go. And the, and the thing about it was not that I was to be scared or to change my plan because of devils, but what it was is God didn't ordain for me to go at that time. And so the angels came to speak to me to say, no, you can go. And then God confirmed it. And he said to me, you know, one, I, I need you here in another place. And so two, if you would have went and not had contact with us, let's just say in general, you would have went over there. You were going to have a nice uh, attack coming for you. So this is the type of stuff sometimes where you see where you done lost your money. Um, um, you, they stole your bags. Um, you know, um, next thing you know, you're running into to, to people who are thieving and stealing and your spirit don't feel right. You know, things like that start happening. Uh, they're attacking your family. And so one thing that you really need to take heed on this is knowing even in different states, there's rulers over different states in the United States. So these used to be angels. That means they have power. You know, people, oh, I am afraid of the devil. And oh, we keep talking about the devil. You know, if you're ignorant to the spirit realm, you are going to be in trouble. If you think that there's not rulers in the unseen world, even in a different state in the U.S., just because you're saved doesn't mean there's not things happening in the spirit. People in the Bible were saved. You know, there was people also who had relationship with God. God was on the earth with the apostles and it didn't stop the devil from attacking. So don't be ignorant. Be, have knowledge. Remember he said, my people perish for lack of, lack of knowledge, but, but it's also the will to, to want to be humble and understand that. You don't know everything. None of us do, but God does. And so we have to understand more about it. You gotta humble yourself. All right. Um, there's principalities and rulers over churches too. I want you to understand that. Um, you know, so, so when it's for the negative side, there's something running, you know, all these different denominations and things going on. I won't go there. All right. So after principalities or rulers, archangels. Okay. Now remember they were chief princes. 
You know, they have a purpose. Gabriel was messenger. If you look, he was always bringing the message. He brought the message to Mary. We talked about that. He brought the message to Daniel after his fast. Right. But Michael, who's the protector, who's the war angel warfare over all the warfare angels, he had to come and help out. Daniel was at a higher level of grace. Daniel was in a place of authority, even though he was in the Babylonian kingdom. So you have to understand that that the archangels will come, but you also have to reach a different place with God. You know, you, you're not going to be going to church and just sitting there, getting to the work, coming home, living a whole different lifestyle and expect to to hear and to work with archangels. That is not going to happen. OK, so if you think about it, it's like a job, it's like, you know, if, if you're on the bottom of the totem pole, but you're not doing and getting to know the mission of the company and everything, the boss ain't going to come down talking to you just for no, for no reason. He's going to go through the other levels. Now, if you are, you know, one of his leaders, then the boss is going to come in and talk to you. And so, or put you all together so that you can talk to each other and pass the messages down. All right. First Thessalonians four and 16 for the Lord himself with a cry of command with the archangels call with the sound of God's trumpet will descend from heaven and the dead in Christ shall rise. Angels, archangels are coming down with God in the second coming. Okay. That's probably the second place in the Bible. Uh, I think it's the book of Jude that mentions archangels. Okay. It's not very many places. Um, but, but nonetheless, they're there and they're coming back with God. Okay, the last one for the third sphere is angels. Now, these are all the other angels. Um, I had mentioned before that God gave me a food angel. And if you don't believe me, oh, well, there's nothing I can tell you. But I've had an issue with my diet. Um, the Lord showed me that it's been all in my family bloodline. My grandmother died of, of type uh, cholesterol. She had bad cholesterol, type two diabetes, stroke at 50. And then she died of a heart attack at 55. If I'm not mistaken. I think she was 55. Um, but the, what the Lord showed me was that's an attack on my whole bloodline. And so I needed help with food and what the food angel was doing. That's what they call it, food angel. So what the food angel was doing was like at times where I was trying to get something to eat and I knew he would be that voice saying, no, put it back. Why don't you make this? He would help me make meals with what I had in the cabinet or help me if I was able to buy groceries with the grocery list. Why don't you make this do that? Um, and as I was obedient, the food came out good and, and I was in line with God. OK, there are some times I didn't listen and then it reflected. But God sent an angel to help me. Uh, Rosa, who was on here, got a bilingual angel because she speaks, prays very well in Spanish, speaks Spanish, but she also speaks English too, but is not as comfortable. She received that, you know, a bilingual angel. Uh, the Lord recently told me about an angel called home service. I was like, home service? Because I asked for help with cleaning the house. I said, Lord, I keep wanting to clean and I, everything's getting in the way. I need your help. I need angelic assistance. He said, I'm going to send you angels of home service. And I'm telling y'all, I could not see them very clearly, but I cleaned up a few rooms faster than it seemed like I could normally do. Um, and it was very clean. And so, you know, I had some help. Um, so angels are around uh, Matthew 18 and 10. I heard recently, I'm not going to mention, you know, the, the person's name, the prophet or anything, but uh, it was something that, that he said that we didn't have uh, angels. He said, there's no guardian angels when you're, you know, uh, until like Jesus, you know, received um, until he began ministry. There's no proof that, you know, in the Bible that there was angels given to children. And he used Jesus as an example. And I was talking with my husband about this. And I said, you know, I respect the man of God very, very much, but that didn't sit right in my spirit. I said, I don't, it just don't feel right. Something don't sound right, but I'm not going to refute anything until I have word to back it up. Since we are talking about angels, I want to talk about this. Matthew 18 and 10. 
says, beware that you don't look down on any of these little ones. If you go to verse two, he's talking about children. Jesus is talking right now. He had called little children to him. And when he was speaking, he said, for I tell you that in heaven, their angels, T-H-E-I-R, their possessive angels are always in the presence of my heavenly father. So not only did Jesus call a child to him, that's who he's talking about when he says the little ones. But in 1810, he says, for I tell you that in heaven, their angels talking about the children, are always in the presence of my heavenly father. So I found scripture, not only that children have angels watching over them as children, but Jesus himself said it, okay? So, um, but there's angels for everything with different functions. Um, I have, because we're running, you know, a deliverance ministry, um, I have, angels who help me with deliverance. Okay. Um, and so the Lord has given me their names and everything, but for, for the sake of not, you know, the Lord not allowing me to release that right now. Um, but I, I have angels that help with that. So you may have a different mission, whether you're going to be doing worship, whether you're going to be working with kids or something. So it's important that you have a prayer life, that you have relationship with God, because God will show you what angels are working with you and he'll give you their names. Um, you know, when we really begin to operate in signs, wonders, and miracles in a whole nother way, God has already revealed to me the name of two angels that are going to help me out. Uh, I spoke on here the other day, or maybe even in the first one that I was having trouble one time preaching because I had things going on in my life. And by the time I turned around, we were going to have worship and prayer. And I told, uh, you know, you guys that God sent, uh, these angels called the rescue rangers. And it was Chip and Dale. He was playing the song like that cartoon. And that was their names. And if you actually research their names, it's talking about the valley. One of them stands for the valley and the other one stands for uh, uh, son of God or servant of God. And what it was shown was while I was in the valley, you know, feeling low, like, Lord, what am I going to say to your people? He sent angelic help. And the, the Bible says that angels preach. I just read that to you. I gave you scripture on it. They helped me preach because they fed me and I fed you. And so we were co-laboring and working together. That is the first time I ever experienced something like that. And I was amazed um, by what God was doing. Okay. Um, we are going to hit, um, nine in about four minutes. So, uh, the scripture that showed that the angels sang together and shouted for joy as God created the earth was talked about in Job 38 and seven. Uh, Zechariah one and 13 shows us that the Lord talks with angels and answers them and had done it in front of humans. Zechariah was a prophet of God. It said the Lord, Zechariah 1 and 13, the Lord spoke kind and comforting words to the angel who talked with me. So that shows that you, God, and the angel can be communicating at the same time. Okay, you got, let me tell you something. Zechariah, if God is not a respecter of persons, Zechariah is a human being just like me and you. So push your limit on what you think you are supposed to be doing as a believer. Because if you're not operating with angels, you're supposed to be. If you don't speak in a heavenly language, you can. God will give you that ability to do that. You have to want it. You have to have faith. You have to have faith. Remember, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So first, you got to fix you. If you want to be able to do these things, Zachariah is no more special than you are to God. So if he was able to do these things, if Abraham, if Daniel was able to see angels, if Pastor Liza is able to see angels, so are you. You just have to have the faith for it and you have to connect with God and begin to discipline yourself as well because it does take discipline, okay? But they will help you. All right, um, 
the law was given by angels. Acts chapter seven, verse 53 tells us that. Angels, I'm telling angels speak for God. They do the will of God. Um, there are angels of destruction. Psalms 103 and 20. There's even the angel of death talked about in the book of Revelations, also talked about during the Passover in the book of Exodus, right? The angel of death came as the last plague, you know, to take the sons of those who didn't have the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. So there are angels whose mission is to carry out the will of God for judgment, for death. Um, there's angels that have weapons. Um, where are we at? Uh, do, 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 do. Ah, where did you go? Uh, they have a sickle. There's angels with sickles that are going to come at the end time to gather up uh, the, the harvest. I'm sorry because it's here and I just stepped over it. Um, there are angels of fire, which you guys hear me calling a lot. Okay. Revelations 14 and 17. Angels have weapons, sharp sickles, fire. Uh, Daniel 3 and 25, he said, look, I see four men loosed and walking about in the midst of the fire without harm. And the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. And some of them said angel. Some uh, scriptures, Isaiah 37 and 36. Then the angel of the Lord went out and struck 185,000 in the camp of the Assyrians. And when men arose early in the morning, behold, all of these were dead. Okay, so some of the thought process that angels only are happy and know they're created for purposes, okay, and the purposes of God. Angels gather and remove um, wicked things from the kingdom. Matthew 13 and 49. Um, here's a good one for those of you that really get into your studying. Angels carried the men to Abraham's bosom. This is Luke. 16 and 22. Why does this matter? Because before Jesus came, when men of God and women of God died, a lot of people go, well, where did they go? Well, the Bible, my computer's about to close. The Bible talks about the fact that Abraham's bosom existed, that there was a great separation, a chasm, a divide between the people that died and went to Hades or hell and the people of God who died, but since Jesus didn't come yet, they couldn't go to, uh, to heaven. They couldn't go anywhere. So they were in Abraham's bosom. Well, the Bible talks about in Luke chapter 16 that the angels carry them there. So we can bet what? That who's carrying us to heaven? Angels. Angels. Some of them are on assignment to do that. Okay. That's powerful. Uh, we talked about angels of God coming with Jesus, um, Matthew 16, verse 27. Angels are over churches, Revelation, verse 2, right? We had the angels of the church of Smyrna and um, Sardis and so on, Philadelphia. Okay, there's angels over churches. Um, I'm going to stop there um, because the time is far spent. But I pray that you all enjoyed worship. Um, I pray that you are getting something out of us talking about the angels and certainly are going to go back and study. Um, and I'm going to pray over the word um, and just pray over everyone. Right now, does anybody have any urgent prayer request or something that they want us to pray for before I pray over everything? Yeah. Nobody. I, I do more. Okay. Um, if uh, y'all both in prayer right now and individually, when you, if I come to your mind um, while you're praying, um, I'm taking my test soon. It should be uh, pretty much at the end of this week towards next week, pretty much the end of this week though. Um, I'm going to be taking a test to be able, be able to get a certification to be able to get a job. And so um, I just wanted to, Ask for y'all to be praying for me because um, I'm already in job searching right now and just trying to uh, get ahead and all that. And then also this te this test is pretty daunting for me. So uh, just to be able to keep me in prayer for that. Okay. I see. Okay. Prayer for health. 
Um, anybody else for, for Christina? Pray for her health. Anybody else? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Nahalia. No, this is Nahalia's cousin. Oh, Nahalia's cousin. Okay, I'm sorry. What's your name? My name is Shanae. Shanae, nice to meet you. Yeah, I haven't been in a, a setting of like this in years because of a lot of trauma. But um, I am coming back in a congregation for the first time in years to ask if um, they could uh, pray for me a new career. I want to do customer service because my body no longer can do um, the things they used to do working labor. Um, I used to be working for the post office. Okay. Um, so having a baby made me really sit down and, and because of her condition right now, because I'm waiting on to see if she's going to stop, uh, having seizures. Okay. So, and, um, because when I gave birth, it was, she was born on July the 16th of this year. Um, it made me sit down pretty much made me realize I've been wasting away in a career of for the post office for over a decade with no benefits. And all I'm, my body is doing is deteriorating. So I wanted to leave and look for a new um, career, but I'm also torn because I'm afraid because I've been there so long. Okay. So I would like to have a headstrong, more courage and more faith in that God has and loved me. He is going to help provide at this time in my life. Okay. Um, and I just felt on my spirit to, to tell you that we are right now in our ministry. We've been talking about um, Joshua and Caleb. We were on angels for the last two weeks, but prior to that, God has talked to us about possessing the land at the time where, you know, the Israelites were stuck in the wilderness and only those that were thinking on a new path could enter the promised land. And it was most of the young generation because a lot of times the older generation stays stuck in the past. They stay stuck in a slavery mindset. So you're at the right place because not only is this God's family ministry, but we are in a place where we are possessing the land. We're entering new territory because God already told us he gave us the victory for it. So this is what I want to tell you. The post office is Egypt. The post office is passe. If you want to go into no, your new land, not only do you need to speak it, but you need to have faith that God will put you exactly in that new promised land, in that new territory. And I'm going to pray for God to help you to unveil and, and give you revelation about where he wants you because the word of God said we work for God. So the next place you're going, you're not only going there to make money, you're not going there to just take care of yourself and your family. You're going there because God has purposed you to be there because you're going to get something from there and they're going to get something from you. This is your turnaround time. This is your place where you've been in the wilderness. Like I even see you need to take some prayer oil. If you don't have any, send me your address and, and I can um, give you a contact offline because you need to pray over your daughter with anointing oil every day. And you need to declare, you need to bind up those seizures where, wherever it's coming from. And you need to command healing over your daughter. See, the problem is not the medical system. The problem sometimes is that it's an issue of faith. It's an issue of you decreeing and declaring over her what you know that your God can do. It's a believing that he can heal her, that he can deliver her. My daughter just had a baby as well. She's three weeks or she just turned a month old um, two years ago. So I, I understand how this is, you know, must be tearing you up because I couldn't imagine having to deal with my grandbaby having seizures. Um, and so I want you to understand right now, your faith is tested more than ever. I don't know what you've been through in that last place. I don't know what they did to you, but I will say this. Your God is a living God. He's a God who loves you, but he's a God who also gave you power, power to speak over your life and your family with words of life. 
and he gave you the power in the mighty name of Jesus to bind up every devil that's after your family, that's after your children, that's after your peace. And he gave you that keys to the kingdom to bind and loose, command them to go. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I just come in agreement with you. And I say, Father, I thank you, Lord, for guiding her back to your presence, to the spirit and the truth of you. Lord, I just pray over Shanae now in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank all of you. Join me in your heart. Just press your hand out towards her as I'm praying for her. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your daughter speaking up, God for her coming forth, my God, and declaring and decreeing, God, she wants something new, God, not only in work, God, but just in her life, Father. I thank you that she will learn to take a authority yes. in your name over the enemy right now, the name of Jesus. I speak to her baby, my God. I send angels of healing over there, Lord, as we've been talking about the angels, God, we send angels of healing in her midst, my God. Father, that they would touch her daughter, God, that wherever these seizures are coming from God. We bind them up in the name of Jesus and we command a reversal, Father. I thank you, Lord, her nerves will settle, God. I thank you, Lord, that the blood of Jesus is rolling through her daughter's veins, God. That her daughter will begin to, Father, even just normalize by the Spirit, God. That the Holy Spirit is leaping in her like it leapt in Elizabeth's belly for John, like it leapt in Mary's belly for the Holy Ghost. Father, I thank you for Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, I thank you that the blood of Jesus rolls through her daughter's veins, rolls through her veins, God. I thank you, Lord. She's coming out of the wilderness, God. She's coming out of a place of God working and feeling like her body is deteriorating, God, like nothing is happening, God, but God, like she's spiritually dying. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for the abundance of fruit in the promised land, for the victory that you already told Joshua and Caleb that they had as they led the people into battle against these giants. I thank you, Lord, that her giants in her life, in her daughter's life, are already defeated in the name of Jesus. Father, I speak that you would begin to reveal unto her. You knew her before she was in her mother's womb. Reveal unto her the next place that she should go. Father, I decree and declare not only is a new job coming, but God, it's a job that would fulfill her. God, it's a job that would bring her back to life in the name of Jesus. It's a job, God, that she wouldn't even have to spend so much time away from her daughter, God, as she sees her grow, as she nurtures her, as she trains her up in the way that she should go. God, we believe that you could do this, God, that you can give her a position, God, where she would still be able to be there for her daughter, for her family. Father, I thank you now. Replenish her every place that she's empty, God. Every church, her every past, God, where they've put her, God, where they've lied to her, where they've spoke negative, where anything happened, God, that was not of you, Lord. I thank you now you're healing it, God. I thank you, Lord, for giving her that release that she needs, God, to go forward into a new place in you. God, I thank you for her life, God. I thank you for how much you love her. I thank you that she won't, con you know, she won't leave you, God, that she'll be consistent and continue, God, to seek your face, to seek your word, to seek a relationship with you, God, and that it will emanate in her generations for years to come. God, that her daughter will worship and serve you, God, and her children and her children's children. God, that it will continue, Lord. I thank you. Today is the turnaround in Shanae's life and her journey with you, God. I thank you, Lord. She'll get to that place again, God, where she can enjoy your presence, where she can find joy in your word and other people who fellowship and believe in you. Father, we bind religion. That's the spirit that crucified Jesus. All them religious spirits, God, remove them out of her midst, remove them out of her mind, God. And we thank you for relationship, God. I thank you. She will know relationship and those that have it with you as of today. Father, I pray over Christina's health, God, as we're praying for Shanae. I pray for Christina now in the name of Jesus. Father, you already know, God, that her womb is being prepared, Father, to carry a prophet in the midst. Father, I just thank you, Lord. Let her faith align, God cleanse everything else in her body. Her temple is a temple of the Lord, God. And I thank you, Lord, that reveal those things that she may be doing, my God, that may go against God, having her temple purified to carry the 
baby that you've already promised her. I thank you, Lord, no matter what, even like Sarah was in her old age, God, and you still had her womb deliver the promised child. I thank you, Lord, that the child promised to her will be delivered, God. Every other thing going on with her body, we command it to get in line with God in the name of Jesus, God. Every disease, every infirmity, God, everything that's crooked, my God, right now, the name of Jesus, let the angels of fire touch it, God and purify it and make it whole. Father, we pray for Aramiah. We thank you, Lord, that, that it's a test of the blood. It is a test of the blood. It is a blood test, Father. And as he recognizes the blood that redeems, that delivers, that sets free, God, that he will pass that test because the blood of Jesus passes all. God, it redeems all, it purifies all, it heals all. So we thank you for his career in phlebotomy. We thank you, Lord, that he would be an amazing phlebotomist because he's an amazing believer in you, because he has faith in you, because he knows that without you, he is nothing. Father, I thank you. You said you were the greatest rabbi, the greatest teacher. So God, anoint him afresh with the words of knowledge he needs to understand, God, and the wisdom to have the victory that already is. Father, we just thank you so much, God. We thank you, Lord, Father, for this lesson on angels. Father, we thank you that we don't worship them, but we, we ask you, Lord, for, for those of us that are still working to have that type of co-labor with them, God. Open up the heavens to us, God. Talk to us in the night. Speak to us in prayer, God. Talk to us through people, through things. Re -re Help them through their studying, my Lord, to come closer, God, to learn more about the spiritual realm and how to operate so that they can complete their assignments that you've given them. Father, we thank you for the first step of salvation. God, we thank you for Jesus. And now we thank you for sanctification. And I'm hearing for those of you that have backslidden, that have kind of gone into a place where you, you believe in God and you're here, but you haven't really been putting in the effort on your own. Just come, the Lord said, just come, just repent it, lay it at my feet. And I'm going to help you stand when you stand back up to move in the right direction. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for this word. I thank you for all those on here and those they will talk to. They will lead to this website, to this um, ministry, to this word, to prayers, whatever it is, God, to help them, God, get closer to you. We decrease as you increase in our lives and we give you all the glory, honor and praise. And it's in Jesus name that we cover it. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Amen. You know, God bless you. And I pray that that you continue um, to strengthen in your journey.